What is up, everybody? We are back here at King Film Sports for the 2024 official Big East tournament predictions here as the Big East, obviously one of the preeminent basketball conferences every year. And this year, no different. You've got a dominant one seed in UConn, only three losses throughout the entire season. We'll certainly be on the one line in the March Madness tournament. Will they get knocked off? We will see here. You've got some pretty competent foes in Creighton and Marquette at the two and three line. Uh, UConn did also lose to the four seed Seton Hall and St. John's made it close one of those times. So we will see here. You've also got a couple other worthy competitors in Villanova and Providence there. Um, but first here, we will start out in the first round on March 13th. But before we get into it, be sure to check out the other conference tournament predictions on the channel, as well as the Bracketology videos. We'll link some of those uh, up above in the top right, but be sure to watch this video in full first. So let's get started here. Started out in the 8-9 matchup, and of the first round matchups, this one is likely going to be the most competitive. And this one between Butler and Xavier, I just see as a complete coin flip between these two teams. Uh, both pretty disappointing seasons this year, uh, mediocre regular season records. Probably neither team is going to end up in the tournament unless they make a colossal run in this tournament. And in this game, I'm going to take Butler slightly lean to win this game here against Xavier and MSG. I just think that they have a bit more talent and are a bit more consistent on the defensive end, but I mean, this one could really go either way, but give me Butler there. I just think over the course of the season, they've been the better team there. Then here we've got Providence in Georgetown, and I know that Georgetown is probably not as bad as their record indicates here in conference. They only had two wins in the regular season, which is absolutely abysmal. Now, Providence isn't an elite team by any stretch, but I do think that they are better than Georgetown. Might be on a bit of upset alert here, and that would be a very disappointing end of their season, but I do think they will get past Georgetown here and advance to the quarterfinals. And that brings us to Villanova against DePaul. And DePaul, obviously one of the worst teams in a major power conference uh, this season. Obviously no wins in conference here, so I do not see it happening against this Villanova team. And so give me Villanova to advance in a route there over to Paul. So that brings us to the quarterfinals. So pretty much all chalk there. Uh, could see Xavier beating Butler, as I said, but for this video, we'll take Butler at the eight seed. Uh, so that sets up UConn and Butler in this one. And in this game, I do not think that Butler matches up with UConn very well at all. I just think that UConn, especially with their size, uh, will just take it to Butler down low, especially being rested in this matchup. I think that they'll have a sizable fan advantage as well. Uh, a lot of those UConn fans with this number one seed will be traveling down to MSG. 12 p.m. ET start in this one. Give me the UConn Huskies to be ready to go in this one. Dan Hurley will have them coached up right, and I think UConn wins in a route in that one in the quarterfinals, ending Butler's season effectively there. Then we get to one of the most intriguing games of the tournament so far. Um, it's the only quarterfinal set in stone as we speak at this moment. It's the 4-5 Seton Hall versus St. John's. And I talked about potential fan atmosphere in that UConn Butler game. In this one, though it starts at 2.30, I mean, these fans will be packed out. Obviously, you know that St. John's uh, has some of their home games at MSG, so this is a quasi-home tournament for them. Um, but also, you got Seton Hall playing in Newark in the Prudential Center, so their fans will be packed out in this one as well. And Seton Hall, obviously a team that was doing great uh, within the non-conference and then the early conference slate. They've slowed up a bit recently, still up at this four seed, and I do think that they have a lot of talent if they can just get it back on the right track. But in this one, I'm actually taking St. John's to win this game here. I just think that they have been a red hot team recently. Now, the schedule and some of the teams that they've played on this winning streak to end the season haven't been great, although they did beat Creighton at home. Um, but I think after Patino called out the team, they've really been maximizing their output for this talent. It's really a pretty talented team. Um, they're one of the most talented teams in the conference, but they've got to put it all together in Patino's first year, and I think they will be able to do that in this game. Will be a very good game against Eaton Hall, but give me St. John's to win that one there. Then we get to Creighton against Providence. Um, this one should be an easy Creighton victory. With Creighton's shooting, they are a high variance team in my opinion, uh, which means that if they have a bad shooting performance, uh, they can be susceptible to an upset, but they can also beat anyone. But in this game, I just do not see Providence getting it done here. Give me Creighton rested here to advance easily there. Then we get to Marquette and Villanova, and this should be a great game to end things out here as I could certainly see Villanova getting this upset here. They certainly have the talent to do so, but they just haven't been putting it together as well. Uh, not to mention, I mean, Marquette really needs to round into shape. Kolick was out for 
uh, period of time there. He just got back against Xavier and they did get that win, um, but they've just been in a slump recently. So I think they've got to get it back here and show some good form in this tournament. I think they get it done against Villanova there. So that brings us to the semifinal round where we've got UConn and St. John's. And the two of these matchups were pretty intriguing uh, over the course of this season. The one at UConn was a four point game. And then the one at St. John's in MSG, I think was around double digits, but it was pretty close uh, throughout the first half of that one. So expect a competitive game here. I think potentially St. John's could cover this spread, keep it in single digits, but I do expect UConn to win in this one. St. John's obviously great guard play. I think they may be able to out-execute UConn in that realm, but I just think that UConn is the more disciplined team. Maybe we'll have less turnovers and we'll capitalize on more of St. John's mistakes in this one. And then also we'll pound St. John's inside, own the boards. Um, and so when it's all said and done, give me UConn to defeat the Johnnies there. Although I do think if this exact matchup happens, the Johnnies will have a good chance of victory in that one. Then we get to the 2-3 matchup, Creighton and Marquette. And this will be a matinee semifinal matchup. And in this one, we obviously just saw Creighton win, uh, blow out Marquette uh, within the last couple of weeks. But in this one, I think it's going to be different. We saw Oso Iguodaro uh, against Xavier have a great performance. And I think Kolik, with that experience under his belt from the Villanova game, will get into good shape here. And I think that he will have a big game. Um, you've obviously got some great players on Creighton as well. Trey Alexander, Kalkbrenner, they've really got to neutralize him, the big man of Creighton. But if they are able to do that, and I think that they can neutralize him, then I think Marquette, behind a strong shooting performance, will be able to supplant Creighton there. So a really good matchup there. But give me Marquette to edge out Creighton. And then that brings us to UConn and Marquette here, the top two teams for a vast majority of this Big East season before this kind of Marquette slump as of late. And the two games this regular season, very disappointing. First one at UConn, uh, Connecticut won uh, by at least 20 points. There was never close. And then the second one was this last week, but unfortunately, Tyler Kolick didn't play. He should be in the lineup for this one, and it should be a lot closer here, but I do have UConn getting it done. I just like their size inside uh, with Kling in there. I just think that they will be able to hammer Marquette low. It will take an insane shooting performance from the Golden Eagles here, and I think that they may be able to do it. Um, they certainly are capable of upset of an upset in this one, but I just cannot predict it happening. UConn has been one of the most dominant teams here uh, from the start to the finish of the college basketball regular season here, so I think they will finish it strong in the Big East tournament here and will secure the victory there. So let me know in the comments what you think of my predictions. Do you have more upsets within your bracket? Do you have a team knocking off UConn? Who do you think has the best shot to do so? Let me know in the comments down below. As always, be sure to like, subscribe, and I will see you all in the next one.